there and welcome to The Hidden Chest, where I talk about overlooked, underrated, or underappreciated things you might not have tried. And today, we'll be talking about Hugh. Now Hugh de la Ferte was a French trover who really hated Blanche of Castile and her bias towards foreigners. Heck, he didn't even like Theobald I of Nevers. What a prude, right? Either way, he wrote some pretty dank pieces, like Intolent IQ Jedi. Not to mention he... Wait, that's it? Huh, that's a pretty short Wikipedia entry. I don't even think I pronounced half of it correctly. Guess I'll have to talk about the video game instead. Hugh is an indie puzzle platformer that focuses not on an obscure early 13th century French poet, but on color. Well, not at first. The people in the world of Hugh can only perceive the world through black, white, and gray, but once you get a fragment of a mysterious color ring... Wow. I shouldn't need to point this out, but Hugh is absolutely gorgeous. Its style is minimalistic, yet it has a lot of cartoonish charm, and the way the colors mesh with the black and white world is just magical. The story is actually pretty similar in some regards. It's simple, yet incredibly charming and given more depth as the game goes on. You play as a boy named Hugh, a silent protagonist who's been receiving letters from a mysterious scientist who invented a ring allowing those in this black and white world to perceive color. But due to interference from a man named Dr. Dre, I mean Dr. Gray, wow did I actually just say that? Well whatever, she's trapped in the world of color or something. It's up to you to get through increasingly complex puzzles and recover all eight pieces of the ring. Then, maybe, you can finally bring her back. Also, important lore note, skeletons can talk in this universe. Wait. No. No! Not again! Oh, and I can't forget the music. It's mostly comprised of beautiful piano arrangements, and it's phenomenal for puzzle solving. Seriously well done stuff. But enough about the presentation, how does this game even work? Well, remember that piece of the ring you found early on? By using it and the right analog stick, you can change the world to aqua, and eventually many other colors. Changing the world's hue like this has an odd effect on any objects with matching colors. They become completely intangible. This may seem like a simple mechanic, but like with many similar games, this concept gets pushed to the absolute limit. Throughout the game, you'll need to move boxes, dodge rocks, goop things, and much more, all with the help of this single mechanic, and it all works pretty much flawlessly. The puzzles themselves are all masterfully designed and loads of fun to solve, not to mention the difficulty curve throughout the game is very well done, without any puzzles feeling too easy or too overwhelming. Honestly, I'd almost consider the game perfect if it wasn't for one specific thing. The game's optional collectibles, the beakers. Most of them are well hidden and fun to find, but if you miss one, you have to go back through and resolve many, many puzzles just to get a chance to find it again. Which on its own wouldn't be too bad, but some of the beakers are quite literally impossible to get on your first run, since you don't have the proper colors unlocked. These ones aren't even hidden at all. They aren't fun to find, it's just a load of busy work and padding. Plus, some beakers later on are behind hidden walls, and that just ends up making me ram my face into everything over and over again because I desperately don't want to spend 30 minutes doing the same puzzles. Again. And what did I get for all my labor? An achievement. Yeah, that's it. No bonus cutscene, no secret unlocks, nothing but the achievement. Needless to say, I was pretty bitter. But hey, out of all the things you could get wrong when developing a game, the optional collectible is probably a best case scenario. Because I can't stress this enough, every other aspect in this game is almost entirely flawless. It's got charm, it's got substance, it's got a celebrity cameo by Sir Isaac Newton. If you have a Steam account, Xbox One, PS4, or even a Vita, do yourself a favor and check this game out. 
Just be sure to use a controller if you're playing on PC. Trust me, the game is designed around it. And remember... I need you to see the world not for what it is, but for what it can be. Wait, they stole that from Overwatch! Thank you.